first of all, before we start, I have to show this to you because I want to show this to you on camera. I've been what is it? watching your movie since I was a kid. Oh, wow, look, look at this. He's got the tickets from Passion this, of the bro. Christ, Payback. Whoa. Uh, payback, oh my God, that's good. You must have been four years old. I, I, was, I was 14 when Payback came out. Oh my God, it was an R-rated film, dude. You <laughs> broke the law. Lethal Weapon 4. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the jam. Yeah, it wasn't Jet Lethal Weapon 4? Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, that was big rat tail. Yes, yeah. that was a good flick. Jet Lee. Um, you know, it's interesting to me. I think that I've been watching you, as I mentioned, Braveheart, uh, that movies you've made, but filmmaking has changed a lot, but you made an interesting point that movies like this aren't made anymore, and that's 100% true. So what is, like, obviously you started off doing, directing those movies, what, is that, what did that mean for you to have those films under your belt, Braveheart, and did it help you make this movie in oh. regards to like, like, what did you learn from Braveheart that you utilized here that maybe like you fixed or? or Everything, I mean, you know, you, 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 I'm a veteran of you know, filmmaking, I suppose, mm -hmm. over what, 30 years or whatever. I've been. Well, since I was a kid, I've been at the hub, like watching every camera angle and talking to people, you know, so it's a, it's a an acquired thing over like 40 years. So those experiences inform what I do now. Now it's different because you're in the independent realm. Mm. You have less money, less time. I think I made this for half the time it took to make Braveheart. Wow. Wow. And, and about 30% less of that budget. Than, and that was 20 years ago. So like you, you get an idea of this, the kind of restraints you're under. Uh, if if you're making an independent film and the and the superhero involved in this film doesn't wear spandex, I mean you're not getting the budgets, mm. so it's a, it, it's 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 a whole there's an art to that, mm. you know. But digital is amazing. I'm, I love I'm interested, it. I'm inter it's, it's interesting. You say, I, I'm, I'm a film guy, but I like this looked like a film to me. It looked like mm. film. Yeah, let's hope so. I mean, <laughs> it's digital, and you, you kind of we made it gritty. Yeah. I mean the way we timed it, the way it looks, it's. It looks good. The shutter speed, you messed the shutter speed at all? Like, uh, oh, of course. That's you know. so cool. There's every kind of trick, double printing, you know, skipping frame. I mean, we did every kind oh of my God. horrible thing in the edit you can imagine. So, and we even had these tiny it. little cameras like the size of cigarette boxes that cost 1500 bucks in some of these scenes. You can see them too, like explosions and people flying magic out. Magic can? Huh? Black magic. Little black magics, yeah. Really? $1,500, yeah. Like GoPro kind of thing. Was yeah. it? A little better than that, but essentially the same kind of thing. I found this fascinating. In the first main battle, as we get to uh, later on in the film, you use little to no score. And then the second one, you bring the score in. I loved that. And I'm wondering what the decision as a director is to actually go through with that, have little to no music, and then bring music in. Well, you, you construct all these things. I mean, it's battle heavy. I mean, you have three battle sequences in, in the second half of the film, and, you, and one must have a different character for each section. So it's kind of like a symphony in mm. that way. It has movements. So um, the first one, of course, was just pretty hard hitting and all effects and kind of in your face. And the second one had more at stake and you bring the score in and it has a different character. And of course, the third one is score heavy, almost romantic. And it's like, you know, strings and stuff. So yeah, um, yeah there's, there's a lot of thought goes into the shape of something like that so that it doesn't become old or repetitious yeah. and that it is emotionally, it evolves mm. as a sequence, you know, so yeah, it takes a bit of planning. It's very effective. I mean, for me, it's always remember like, this is insane. And I'm wondering for you as actors, when you're shooting these scenes, obviously you have to shoot it out of order, non-linearly, you're, you're acting, but how much of the explosions and the things that are flying around is actually happening there versus effects? Like what, how much is physically in front of you? I mean, on, on this, uh, uh, a lot. A lot. The, 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 the special effects crew down in Australia were fantastic. They had these special new things called box bombs, yeah. <laughs> which were like these little cardboard boxes about yay big. And you could get really close to them, actually. Yeah. And, um, and they were loud, and they were, they were hot. Mm -hmm. they, they sent off some heat. And, you know, guys with flamethrowers just absolutely that was ripping nuts. stuff up. And, and, you know, they give you a, a BAR, you know, a real, a real big gun. And... Um, <laughs> And then, Big gun. and then you run around, around, run around shooting this stuff. I mean, it was, it was you know as, as close as we could get in that way. Wow. Um, yeah, the, it was um, physically demanding in that way, and, and also yeah, when you got real explosions going off and all these moving parts going on, to slip into that um, intensity, it's kind of you, they, you kind of can't help it, you know. Mm. And also, it's physically demanding in that way, running up and down around this thing for ten hours a day, kind sure. of, kind of stuff. You know, there's grimaces on your face. You kind of don't really notice really you just kind of got to get up there and do it and it comes out and it looks like you looks pretty pretty realistic in that way 
Yeah. One so of the most some of these guys could get right in the middle of yeah. these explosions. Yeah. I mean, they're the kind of thing. I mean, you know, the stunt guys, they'd burn nose hairs and stuff. Oh but Luke God. was getting close to this stuff, yeah. too. I mean, I mean, I, there's shots of him where he's like 10 feet away from this thing going <laughs> off. It's like nuts. It's warm. <laughs> it's warm. It's like, yeah. 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 But uh, it's gonna be hard to stay in character when something like that's happening. Well, no, because because no, it puts you in there. Puts you in, puts you in the character. You know, you're there, kind of <laughs> running around, and there's, there's little, there's the, the little uh, things they shoot at the at the the trees and stuff to yeah. get a little, you know, these little kind of plastic, almost paintball things that shoot off stuff, and yeah. getting right next to you. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 those grimaces are just you trying to get through the scene. You're just waiting for them to say cut, you know, yeah. and trying to get through it. It's really, it's tough stuff in that way. This is a question I would love to ask Andrew, but he, obviously he's not here, but I'm wondering how much, how much of the people did he actually carry as an actor? Like, did he carry, like, when, when you, we see those moments of him carrying wounded men, yeah. is that, is, is, it, is it always him, or do, how does he even, like, it's a lot of people. It's physically arduous, and of course, you know, you lighten the load. Right. Uh, you know, you help assist with cables and stuff like that, hmm. but you don't see them, so it looks good. It looks amazing. But, but the real Desmond was, he didn't have cables and stuff. Hmm. He was doing it. Andrew tried it a few times hmm. with like, like, and he said after like two or three guys trying to drag him, he was spent. Hmm. So you wonder how a guy gets 75 men off a mountain and lowers them down. Off. But, you know, and we met Desmond Jr. and he says his dad was incredibly strong. Hmm. But he was this skinny, skinny. guy. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. guys, they surprise you. They're wiry. Farm wiry strength. farmer's hands, yeah. farmer hands, you know? Now, obviously, we, we have a lot of scenes where you're yelling in people's faces in the beginning of the movie. I was thinking, like, I would love to see your character in Full Metal Jacket walking down that line with Kubrick or something like that. But I'm wondering, you know, when you have to do scenes like that and you're being that harsh to somebody or that, like, is it, is it, because obviously you're Vince Vaughn, but you're playing a different person here. Do you kind of like, is it, when, the, when the camera cuts, like, do you kind of say, Sorry, man. I feel really bad. Like, do you stay in character? He never cuts? apologizes. No. <laughs> <laughs> to defeat the purpose of it. Yeah, sign of you know, weakness, right? Then. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, I think really the the job of the sergeant is to prepare these men for battle, and sure. in this case, they really were going, and he was leading them. So I think it all came from love. I think I had a lot of love for these boys, but part of that is making them as ready as they could be in these terrible circumstances to rely on their training and not to falter. Um, as you see in the movie and knowing going into it, how ter horrific of a battle Okinawa was, Hacksaw Ridge was, that you're really going to be in the thick of things. So you have to reach these kids. So I think there's a sense of humor in some of it because you, you, know, you don't want to be tone deaf and have them not kind of you know, win them over. And sometimes you have to be very strong and tough and then you have to challenge them and push them. And as it pertains to this unique story, which I was blown away when I read because I had never heard of it. Neither have I. You know, Never you looked at this story. guy coming in saying, I really signed up, I believe in this cause, I'd like to be a medic, but I'm not going to carry a gun into combat. So is this guy even legitimate? I mean, what is his deal? It's a waste of our time. We have a short window to prepare people to go to battle. Mm. This is not, you know, in mission with what we're doing. And then to find out that he really means it, well, okay, the kid's got integrity, he is who he says he is, and i got to respect his authenticity, but it's still, it's an absolute jeopardy for all the other folks involved for what we're going to do. <clears throat> so I think that there was a, a truism in the story that how you would react, and um, as you see the real footage later of the, of, the, of the real guys, it was their journey. Mm -hmm. The irony of it is that this man with these convictions that felt odd fit became someone that actually was a huge catalyst for survival for, for everybody involved. And was revered by mm -hmm. those who despised him. And who saved those people who persecuted him. Yeah. I mean, crazy stuff. It's amazing. I know Desmond passed away in 2006, and I'm wondering <laughs> if somehow you could have shown him this movie. Would, what, would there be particular scenes you'd be, you'd be like kind of like, like exci ex excited or nervous to show him? Would you, would you, how, if you sat in the theater and watched this with him, how would you feel? Like, how, what would that be like for you? Well, I would hope that he dug it. I think we did the right thing by Desmond. Yeah. And, uh, his son really His son it. came. Desmond Jr. and he was like blown away. What's that like for you though to, to hear some his son watch your movie and say he's blown away by it? It was great. Mm -hmm. He was like in tears. He he wept through the whole thing. And he went up to Andrew and he said he was like, You nailed my dad. He was like, wow. Andrew did a phenomenal job. I don't know. Tremendous. He inhabited that character or the character inhabited him. I'm not sure which way that was going. It was kind of spiritually some other thing going on there, but it's pretty, he did a good job. They all, all these guys yeah, did. Phenomenal. But, but it was like, uh, that, he that does a beautiful character. job, Andrew, really yes. beautiful. I mean, there's so much innocence in him early on that's sure. very genuine with that relationship, and there's so much warmth and vulnerability in him. 
And then there's so much strength in the mm -hmm. war that's truly, truly there. Nice. That's just a beautiful performance. I could geek out with you guys all day. They're wrapping me up. I had like 30 questions written. But <laughs> you had you great guys, questions. Yeah. I really enjoyed yeah. it. No, you guys did a hell of Tremendous job. Tremendous job. You sound like a film a guy. A, a film no, guy. No, no. That moment when you turned the score off in that moment, like I was, I looked over my, my wife. We just got married like two weeks ago, and I was just like, I looked at her, and I was just like, there's no score here. Yeah. And like, <laughs> you just hear the bullets, and, the, and, the, and it's so graphic because that guy comes up and he like he screams. <sighs>